The Gas Production Enhancement Agreement is really a landmark achievement both for Tana Gas and I think it's also a great uh, progress for, for the Egyptian government. The reason why that is the case is that it's a win-win solution for both Danagas and the Egyptian government. Uh, from an from a Egyptian government perspective, the agreement will allow increased amounts of gas to be produced, uh, and from Danagas' perspective, it allows us to be paid for the products, both gas and liquids, that we produce in the, in the country. But first, let me go back and, uh, and, and elaborate a little bit on, uh, on the current situation in, in Egypt. Danagas in the Nile Delta has a number of mature assets, those are fully developed fields. We have a number of underdeveloped assets, that means that we have fields which are uh, not yet fully developed, they have additional reserves that could be produced, but we need to drill additional development wells in order to be able to uh, access those uh, complete resources. In addition, we have one field which was discovered in 2012, which has not been developed at all and requires to be fully developed. Now, normally speaking, we would go ahead and develop all of these assets to maximize the value of these assets to Danagas uh, in Egypt. But we have not been doing so because since uh, January of 2011, when the political uh, uh, incidents took place uh, starting uh, in that month, uh, we have not been paid for the fully for the uh, products that we've been delivering to the Egyptian government. And as a result of that, we have had to rein back on the level of investments that we've been making in Egypt. Now, this got us into a bit of a, a do loop with the Egyptian government. Uh, the Egyptian government was telling us, please uh, produce more uh, and we'll pay you later. And we were saying, well, if you pay us now, then we will make more investments and we will produce more. And we got stuck a little bit in this, uh, in, in this loop. Now, the, the, uh, the Gas Production Enhancement Agreement breaks that uh, deadlock, that, that logjam. What the agreement uh, allows for is that we will go ahead and make these additional investments in Egypt. And these are substantial investments. It's $270 million of, of new investments, primarily in drilling of new development wells, over a period of seven wells. The majority of that, $200 million, will be invested in the first two years. Now, with that additional investment and the drilling of 37 uh, development wells, it will come significant increased gas production. We will plan to increase our production by about 50% and be able to plateau three to four years at a level of about 250 million standard cubic feet per day. With that increased gas production, comes increased liquids production in the form of condensates and LPGs. Normally speaking, the, uh, the share of these uh, liquids uh, components is about 50-50 between the government of, of Egypt and ourselves. But what we have agreed under the Gas Production Enhancement Agreement is that we will take all of those liquids that are produced as a result of the incremental gas production and we will be able to export those liquids onto the international market sell them on the international market and be paid directly by the market in hard currency. The Gas Production Enhancement Agreement uh, has within it a number of uh, conditions precedent. That is to say, these are conditions that need to be satisfied before we actually start executing the project. The, uh, the first of these is that we will actually receive payment in advance from the Egyptian government to cover the full costs of drilling the, the first wells in the second half of this year. Now, I'm very pleased to say that we're very close to satisfying that condition precedent. Uh, there is a second condition precedent, which is the, to satisfy the completion of all of the ancillary documents that go along with this agreement. And again, we target that that will be completed by the end of October. So the short answer is that uh, we expect that we will be able to get started on this project uh, at the beginning of uh, November of, of this year. Now, the investments that we make will take uh, some time before the, uh, the, the increased production comes on stream, uh, but we expect to see that the first results of this, the incremental production, will be manifesting themselves in, in the first quarter of 2015. Now, because of the level of investments that we make in this project in the first, uh, in the first two years, we will not actually see free cash being developed or, or being released from this project until the middle of 2016. 
Thereafter, however, we will see the overdue receivables that currently stand at $300 million paid down within a two-year period. We're very excited that we've recently managed to successfully bid for and be assigned two new blocks in the Nile Delta. That's Block 1 and Block 3. These two blocks are adjacent to and, in fact, surround our existing development leases. So they're contiguous with, with, our, existing, uh, with our existing assets. Block 1 is very much in keeping with the existing uh, assets that we have, both in terms of their geology and in terms of their depth. So this is very much what we consider to be our bread and butter. And given that we have very successfully explored four new resources in our existing development leases, having doubled our level of production and reserves over the course of the last seven years, we hope very much that we will be able to replicate that success in Block 1 and allow us to continue to extend the plateau of production beyond the three to four years and extend perhaps out to seven years or so. Block 3 is slightly different. Block 3 is a block which has a lot of deep potential. Our existing fields are at about 3,000 meters of depth. The deep potential, which is in an interval called the Oligocene, is double that depth. It's around 6,000 meters. Now, drilling to these depths in the Nile Delta is technically complex uh, and, and therefore it's very challenging to do. But the rewards in the case of success are very great. Uh, the Oligocene has been drilled in the offshore and many discoveries have been made to date, all of them with multiple TCFs of gas reserves. However, the costs of drilling offshore are extremely high. What we have here in Block 3 is the opportunity to drill the same very high potential uh, interval but at, in the much lower cost environment of drilling onshore. We're very excited that we anticipate that we will start the drilling of our first exploration well into the Oligocene deep potential in, at the beginning of 2016. In the case of success, we anticipate that we'll be able to bring that discovery well on stream within about 18 months, which is to say in the middle of 2017. We will have to drill a number of appraisal and development wells thereafter uh, each of which can be brought on stream using an early production facility and tied into our existing network. But at some point we'll be able to put a complete field development plan in place which will involve the construction of a new gas processing plant and we expect that that would be in place sometime towards 2019-2020. We are very proud as Dana Gas that we've just reached a really important milestone in our operations in Egypt, which is that we've just produced 100 million barrels since we started our operations there in the beginning of 2007. Now, this is a fantastic achievement. Not only is it a result of a lot of extremely hard work, successful exploration drilling, successful development, but it also results from the investment of over one and a half billion dollars that Danagas has made in its operations in Egypt. In that process, we have grown to employ over 800 local staff, more than 98% of whom are Egyptians. And of the money that we spend in Egypt, almost 80% of it is spent with local contracting companies. So I think it's a fantastic story, not only of success as far as Danagas is concerned, but of a consistent investment that Danagas has made in the economy in Egypt. We in Danagas are very excited about the long-term potential in Egypt. In addition to Blocks 1 and Blocks 3, which are the new concession areas that we have just signed with the government, we also signed in February of 2014 uh, a new concession area, exploration concession area, in Block 6, offshore the Nile Delta. Now these three blocks together, we believe, contain significant growth potential for Danagas and have the potential to more than double production in the years to come. So we're very excited about that long-term potential in the country. Danagas received from the Egyptian government a payment uh, as part of an overall payment to the petroleum sector at the end of 2013 
amounting to $53 million. Now the government has again stated that it is intending to make a payment to the petroleum sector in Egypt uh, amounting to about $1.5 billion at the middle of this year. We expect, as Danagas, to get our share of that, uh, that industry payout linked to the amount of outstanding receivables that we still have with the government. We are hopeful that that payment will be forthcoming very soon uh, and as we are approaching the end of September, uh, we hope that this will take place next month in October. The Gas Production Enhancement Agreement is an extremely important marker for Dana Gas, its shareholders and also its wider stakeholders. Clearly this agreement allows Dana Gas now to get a return on the investments that it makes in Egypt. But also it provides increased production which will be of benefit to the Egyptian government and the people of Egypt. In that respect I also would like to acknowledge the role that has been played by the UAE government, uh, Dr. Sultan al Jabbar as Minister of State and the Egyptian task force who have been extremely helpful in the successful implementation of this agreement. Overall, this gas production enhancement agreement puts Dana Gas's business in Egypt onto a sustainable footing going forwards and I'm very, very excited about our future in Egypt. We also have, of course, ongoing production from our assets in Kurdistan, region of Iraq, representing about 30,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day as well. What we're also very excited about is the development of our Zora project offshore the United Arab Emirates. The Zora field straddles the Ajman and Sharjah offshore territorial waters and when it's brought on stream, which we hope will be in the middle of next year, will produce about 40 million standard cubic feet of gas per day, which will represent about 10% of Dana Gas's current production and will represent a much needed source of clean energy supplies for the Northern Arab Emirates. So altogether, we are very, very excited about this growth potential that these projects represent for Danagas and for Danagas's future.